Good afternoon. So I'm on Periscope. Hey, praise team. And uh, I tried to do it on my iPad, and um, I'm I'm not getting it. Um, anyway, I couldn't flip the scripture, but I'm so happy to uh, get this now. I hope I'm doing good, but it's all for Jesus, right? So this is my first broadcast, and um, I had a topic called. Um, um, why is things not working? And the question came to my mind while I was driving yesterday, and I almost felt like turning on Periscope at that time, but, you know, I don't want to drive and do it because I'm an amateur at it. However, um, thank God for Detroit in the house and um, our movement and those people that, you know, we're working with. We have so many things that we're doing, so I'm going to read a little bit. Um, about what's going on with us. First, we have an organization called Interfaith Wealth Builders, and we go out into the communities in various states. Um, praise team, I praise team, Sherry is on, and she's in Detroit, so we're developing some things where we help people uh, in Detroit, um, Jacksonville, Florida, in um, Los Angeles, California, in Austin, Texas, and here in Nevada, where I am. Um, uh, one of the newest things that uh, we're doing, if anybody wanted to get involved, is um, we've acquired a radio station. The radio station can be heard at ifwbuilders.com and um, www.kimwarner.com. And so we have a team of people that are working to get the gospel out in various ways because most times we uh, look at traditional ways of doing things and God has definitely taken us out of the box. It reminds me of um, Tone when he uh, did the album Out of the Box. And so uh, moving right along, I hope I didn't forget anything, but um, getting comfortable with doing this. So I thank everybody that's on there and... Um, share with your friends um, because we're going to have a host of people that are going to be coming on praying and we just want to follow one another and get the message out. Whatever you're doing, even if you need it, radio time, we have fair uh, spots uh, because we believe in um, uh, no gift left behind. That's a model that I acquired. You know, a lot of times people believe that they're being left behind because uh, they haven't been seen, but God has shined the light on them for greater levels of creativity. And we're going to hit on a little bit of that information today. All right. So I'm going to go on. Um, no, I want to give you my email address. Uh, if you have anything that you want to add or you want to become a part in any way, if you want to know about radio spots or advertisement, you can email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. That's I-F-W-B-U-I-L-D-E-R-S at gmail.com. All right. So um, in prayer, we just began um, to exalt God and thank him for everything that he's done and everything that he's doing um, everything that he's going to do because God is an on time God he is always there uh, we know that from our past and to um, the day we're standing in right now the fact that we woke up this morning so father God we just thank you and we want to uh, bless your name and lift you up we want to uh, ask you father for the blood of Jesus to cover us as we uh, do this session with Periscope that your full uh, understanding and your word will come through with wisdom and revelation to your people with the knowledge of the Holy Ghost moving that we become lesser of ourselves and more of you amen and so God by the blood of Jesus we just cover the world and the nation know that you said go ye out into all of the land and so that's what we're doing God anybody that is out there and they're struggling with gifts let them you know uh, email us God and get connected with us oh father uh, touch their hearts and minds today to know that they are important and nothing is lost in the name of Jesus cover the families the friends Lord God and 
you know, bring peace, Lord God, as you did at the cross over 2,000 years. Let us not forget that you already done these things for us, and so it's a done deal. All we have to do is move away from fear, doubt, and worry, and so we bind up those spirits today and right now in the name of Jesus and move into our boldness and our courage with the Holy Ghost imparted in us and ask the resurrection of Christ to come forth in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for putting your hand upon uh, each and every person glory to god this viewing the families in the household and all across the world and the nation and god we know that things look bad but god that you're doing a good work even right now to bring a balance in the united states and all across the world and so we just thank you for what you're doing we don't have no complaints because we know the army presence and omni science you know all things you do all things and that you're bringing the men back into the houses to cover their families oh god and this is where the sanctity is and the name of Jesus so we compel and call them back in in the name of Jesus and it is so amen so um, the topic is um, it's a question that many people have had um, this question is often is hidden in the mind and the souls of people constantly causing a boy actually in situations of lives because they they have no idea of why they're not manifesting um, I want to go into Genesis 1 and 2, and there's a quite quite a bit of word here uh, because I think that the word is what comes and it sets the captives free. I don't think I know. And so we could talk about everything that we know, uh, but the one thing that is true is the word of God. So Genesis 1 and 2, when you go back, God was in a time of creation himself. Um, God has saw a place of darkness and that's a revelation for people because many times people are walking in darkness um, and they don't know it because they're so used to walking in darkness but then God spoke light and he even saw light for himself so I was talking to a young lady uh, a couple of days ago and we were talking about obedience and she was giving me her understanding of obedience and I came in and you know, I gave her my reference of obedience at this time because we have different uh, variations of understanding obedience into every mindset. It's different. Some people are saying, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but um, their level of obedience may not be complete as Jesus came and fulfilled uh, the commandments and made the wholeness come forward. Um and they feel that it's okay to dip out and dip out in, but he said that you can't straddle the fence. What I'm saying is, is when we are asking why is things not working, uh, there are a few things that will be bullet points for us to write down why things are not working. And what it is, is that it seems this is not working because just to say in my mind that something is not working says that I'm, I'm in an era state or I'm in a place of non-belief, okay? If I think that things are not working, then my consciousness is already adapted to that, which means that my outer man might prof profess the word of God, but my inner man is saying something else. And what we have to do is get things straight within. Within is where all things manifest. So me and this young lady, we got into talking about why things are not working. And... um Things are not working because of our belief system. We have to take it to another level. So in the beginning when God created light, we could look at that scripture and we could say, well, God in reality had a season in time of darkness. But when reality came to him, he spoke uh, light. Now we don't know how much time there was darkness or void in the earth. That's a scripture, but we do know that there was a revelation um, within that time and God spoke light. Okay, so when God came into the knowledge of light and we know that God knows everything. But when you look at that scripture, um, what I'm saying opens up more understanding because we are patterned um, after God, even though we don't walk after God, we think what we want to think. Uh, our thoughts have to line up with the word of God. And if they don't, this is where, you know, trouble comes in where um, we're not uh, manifesting or we're not um um, we're not coming into fruition. Um, 
Um, maybe we have family situations that we've been praying about. Uh, we have job or financial situations. Uh, we have children. Our husband and wives may not come into um, the alignment as we've been seeking God or praying. Um, there could be um, issues where a person is on drugs, addictions, um, all of these things. Adultery, they, they hinder the progress that we seek when we say, we're not, um, why is things not working? And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, that's kind of basic, but it's not because people think the way that they want to think. And until there's some compelling words or thoughts to take them into another thought process, they'll stay right there. A drug addict will continue to do drugs because they feel good and they're not believing that they can be delivered. Amen. Um, a person will stay in adultery because they are trapped in that place in their mind, but they don't understand that their mind has to be strengthened according to the word of God. You have got to go in and change what has been uh, placed in your mindset. Um, just like Romans said, he said, um, creating me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Or that's, uh, I'm sorry, that's David. But in Romans, he says that we should submit our minds and our hearts on the altar. You know, that it would be given over to him, that submission. Okay. And so submission of the mind and heart gives to God, gives God the ability to make those changes that uh, are relative to the progress of our lives. So where do we fall short? Um, we fall short in blaming other people. We fall short in looking at other people, just like Peter, when he went out or God was calling him out on the water, you know, Peter, uh, was doing fine until he looked to the left or to the right. What's the distraction there? Then he began to sink. So we look at all of these different things and the word is true. We can't blame God for things that we produced or things that we got ourselves um, involved in or the behaviors that hinder the work of God, knowing that he wants us to be blessed. Amen. So the scriptures that I pulled up um, are first, you, you know, keep Genesis 1 and 2. And then um, Matthew um, 5 and 33 says, But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Father, we just thank you for your word. And we thank you, God, for the impartation. And we thank you for whatever deliverance that may be uh, hindering your people. And that, God, you're setting things in order and making the crooked ways straight. So it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. When you seek, you find because seek is a word where even see is derived out of seek. See, see yourself in the mind of kingdom. You got to see yourself in the mind of kingdom based type of thinking. And that has to do with um, Jesus way of thinking and how he trained the disciples. It does not say that we think our own thoughts. We don't think negative about the circumstances because here it is in Romans 4 and 17. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed in, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which are not as though they are. Whatever the situation is, we speak life over it. You know, we don't think first that there is no way that anything can come to pass in this thing, even if it seems impossible, because God is the possibility in the circumstances. He's the one and the miracle worker. He's a supernatural uh, one that turns things around. He brings the super into the natural. Let's say that. And because he brings the super into the natural, we seek him constantly without stopping. And then we change our thoughts concerning what will be in that situation. The situation does it is not brought to you because you cannot get uh, the blessing of the Lord out of it. It's brought to you because he wants you to compel that thing to submit to you. That's where power and authority comes from. The power and authority is given through the spirit of God. And those people, they use the power and authority. They speak those things as though they are. They do not speak what they see natural. They don't even think it because, listen, thoughts began in the beginning. 
There's no way that God could have spoke light without thinking about light at first. So if you are in need of a job or you're an entrepreneur and you need um, God to move, just think about uh, Psalms 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. I have no want. The word says it. I have no want. But when we put our minds in alignment with the word, because it's a daily application, Joyce Myers puts it straight and Joel Osteen, you know, this Bible, you know, you live by the word of God. You live by the application of God, because when you apply the word of God to your life and you walk it out, the wisdom and the revelation of that word will begin to move in your life. Because guess what? Go to John 1 and 1. And John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. When you really look at that, that, that word is speaking so powerfully in the beginning was the word. See, see God, it was dark God, but in the beginning was the word and I spoke light and light came into my situation and I began to see how to move through that thing. Amen. And because I seen how to move in and through that thing, prosperity and productiveness began to be the light of it. But here's the reason why we don't always make the mark in our situations, in our businesses, you know, in our relationships. What happens is, is that we say things productively, but we don't believe them in our minds. If you don't start with your mind and getting a washing and cleansing of the mind, purifying that mind, that mind is going to take your behind into other situations that is not what you really wanted because you're thinking about what you didn't want. Have you ever thought about that? And then, you know, when you think about what you don't want, you look at Joshua 1 and 8 and uh, 1 and 9 all the way through there. He says, meditate on these things and you shall have success. Your success is meditated or thought on and focused on and you manifest what you think on. Your success comes from what you're thinking. We're responsible for everything that we do. We're responsible for everything that we think. There's no um, blaming God. Uh, it's all about what we do and what we say and what we think at the end of the day. So you have what you're thinking, what you're saying. And what you're manifesting, because what you think, what you say is going to cause a manifestation. It may not be what you want, but until you think on these things, here we go. Finally, brethren, in Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are lovely, true, and whatsoever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Now, you know, God gives us commandments, you know? And even in, uh, over here, I'm gonna read Joshua 1 and 8 again. It says, Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And we get an answer why we are snared by our own words. A lot of people don't even think about our thoughts and our words become active rebellion, active disobedience. Because we're not thinking on the things that are lovely and pure. We're not even practicing what Joshua 1, 1 and 8 says. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. It's a law. The laws, when they were given, were uh, their commandments. And, 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 you know, somewhere along the, the line, commandments have been lost. I command you. God was saying to Moses, I command you to go. Even when you become a disciple, according to um, Jesus, you were commanded to go ye out into the nation. We look at people saying, why is it, is it not working? But then we have people that have gifts and ministries and businesses that's going to help others to acquire and to be blessed that we're afraid and we have no idea of how to go out and do it. But in the mind of God, 
when you think on things that are lovely and pure, the setup is right there. There's no hindrance and there's no why you can't because that's only a seeming kind of thing that you're not moving forward. You're not doing anything. The change that needs to come, it starts within us. It has to do with our thoughts. No one could come and say, I'm not responsible for my thoughts because everything that you think, it causes a reaction. There's a production from thoughts. There's, you know, some people are saying, um, well, you know, I, I prayed about this and I prayed about that. But then you went and you worried about this and you worried about that. So then it worry and doubt is canceling out your prayer. You know, you got to look at these things and then be mindful of trapping yourself in your thoughts and in your words, because some people have been so disheartened by the so the situations in life and even around the world, people are watching the news too much. You know, if you go into Revelations um, 22 and 10, um, you read all the way down, it will bless you because it will tell you that let those uh, that are doing wickedness do wickedness. Let those that are vile do vile. But you stay righteous and be holy. Because after all of these things, as you continue in the good work of God, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to reap the reward. You're going to reap the reward. It, it says it in the word. So by faith, we believe these things and we begin to you know, put our minds in motion with thinking on the things that are lovely and pure. Bind up uh, worry and doubt. Bind up all of these things that are keeping you from your good because God said, beloved, I would that you would prosper and be in good health. And John, um, uh, even as your soul prospered, but your soul can't prosper with uh, fear. Your soul cannot progress anything with fear. The soul is like a recorder. It says the same thing over and over. And if you don't put the word of God in there, one of the reasons why people keep seeing the same situations is not just because they got uh, demonic um, stuff attached. We got to come into um, uh, the, the time of just uh, understanding that love and peace is a thing. It's not just because uh, you made the wrong choices, but your programming is not correct. Uh, the Bible reprograms you. You know, yesterday you were into drugs. Today um, you're into the word. And that's a change of mind and a change of heart. That's what the word of God does. It changes your mind in the soulish realm. You can't get away from that until you replace those old thoughts. And I, that's the work that you have to do. The Holy Spirit is there. People have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. They've been filled up, but they still walk into situations where they're doing repeat situations. Generational curses are there. Those things are only there for you to see that there's a level of deliverance that's needed. How do you get delivered? By the word. It's power in the word of God. Exercising that is going to bring a change in you. Every time, if you fasted, you could fast on thoughts alone. If fasted on, um, no, I'm not going to think that. I'm going to think on finally brethren, whatever things are true. I'm going to let uh, uh, Philippians 4 and 8 baptize my mind. You know, I'm going to go to Romans uh, and I'm going to let Romans 12 and 1 and 2 deal with my heart. And I'm going to stay on the altar, hallelujah, with what God is saying. Because many people, they want to think that the world is uh, productive or producing things that they need. But that, that society has captivated people. You got to break away from that. You got to go into the mindset of God as he said, I am the vine and you're the branch. Without me, you can do nothing. Because if you had no blood transfusion of Jesus Christ, the same blood of natural is going to be flowing through you. And the fruit that your mother and father bared, and I'm not saying you got bad parents, is going to produce. And see, these thoughts come up in us. Sometimes we don't know why we've yelled at our children, but we look back at ourselves when we were there with our parents. I found myself repeating things with my, my parent, but I, God started letting me hear myself. And I had said when I was younger, I'm never going to yell at my kids. And I'm not saying that my mother is a bad parent or anything. I just didn't like yelling. I'm a quiet person, you know, until I get speaking or, or talking to people about things. But when we go back and we look at the question, why 
Is it not working? It's just a seeming of it's not working. Seeming comes from the devil. The devil in us. Let's deal with that. It wants us to think that it's not working. Things are not working, but things are working because God said, I beloved, beloved, I would that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. He wants you to prosper and be in good health. That's part of the heritage of God. But we lock ourselves up into the old inheritance from, you know, the natural or our flesh by staying in the same mindset and not letting go. And that's why people are not walking into um, the place that they want to the season or they're not receiving on the uh, the level that they want to in their families. You know, you can't pray and worry, J. Ma said. You got to let it go. You got to be so brave and courageous to let go of the worry. We were programmed for worry. The world has set us up to be defeated. When you think about everything that society has given you and you come back into the word of God, you begin to just thank God for the word and you stay in that word and you see that your only way out and change is in changing you and the transformation that Jesus Christ had given to us. That's the way. So I have, um, been on here quite long enough um, and my presentation of course was why we are not or why have I not um, am I not getting what I need and that 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 was the question why am I not um, getting what I need some people might be saying why am I not making it uh, why am I just uh, um, just making it financially or why haven't I got the job a lot of the questions lie in our own thinking. And, and, and you know, the, the reminder of this is, is that our thinking, if it doesn't line up with God, it's an act of disobedience because, you know, we came here as vessels of God. We came here to walk in the realm of God and to duplicate and to be what he wanted us to be. His hands um, and his feet, he works through us. So that puts us in a place where, where we understand that we definitely have to begin to think on the things that are lovely and pure. We have to adapt to that. We have to bring a mental change in that area. Amen. So I thank everybody for um, coming on and listening and um, we'll do another scope and we have other people that are connected. They're going to, you know, come on and we just want to support everybody and just bring a change in the world. And then, you know, the United States, we need a uh, God, um, and we have God. God is here, but we just need for more pray, people to begin to pray and believe that the change is already here because it looks bad, but it's because nothing looks better until after the aftermath of situations. Everything that our world leaders have done, um, God has to come in correct. Because they thought that they could run a world without God. And so here, the correction is coming. And, you know, we're sitting back and watching. But again, in 22 and 10, we're reminded that as long as we keep doing what we're doing, it's holy. And it is righteous. Then we're going to be covered and protected in what is to come. Amen. So God bless everybody. Thank you for coming on and thank you for listening. You can share this on Facebook. I bless the Lord for you and have a, a wonderful day. Praise God and amen.